the best of actions is beginning the Quran, ending it, and then beginning it again. It's continually reading the Quran because it's always going to open you up to new insights. The Quran, I mean, you know, I've been reading Surah al waqiah for just years. You know, you read it every day. I still find <coughs> stuff in there. And it's just like, whoa, I never thought of that. You know, so you can read something that has a lot of meaning again and again. But he says, lest you become unduly alarmed at the demands that are going to be made on you, let me hasten to say that an expert reader can do these three readings at the same time. All right? Now, but they are strictly speaking three in manner. To be well read, each book should be read in these three ways each time it is read. All right? So, now, then he talks, and this is really important for you as students. He talks about something that experimental psychologists know about learning a complex skill because learning how to read is a complex skill. Learning how to uh, play tennis is a complex skill. Learning how uh, to uh, do uh, play a musical instrument is a complex skill. Right? If you learn piano, you have melody. Right? You have melody. You have bass. Right? And you have chords. You have harmony. Right, so you've got, and then you got rhythm. You have to learn all these things, and initially you can only learn one at a time. But once you master that skill, the 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 the, the skills become one. Now this is really important, and, and I and I. So here, what he says, there's a beautiful book called Mastery, which I read years ago by George Leonard, and he talks about the same thing, and it really helped me. He talks about three types of people of learners. They're what he calls the ha the dabblers, the hackers, and the masters. And the dabblers, he says, are people that they 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 find out about something and they get really excited about it. So like they just discovered tennis, and so they go and they buy. If they're wealthy, they buy the best tennis racket. They get the short. Or you see these kind of guys on the bikes with all this. I mean, they think they're like, um, you know, who's who's the biker famous guy? What's his name? Huh? Lance Armstrong. Yeah, you see them all over. These guys, you know, Lance Armstrong wannabes. You know, like they've got the shirt, even with the the uh, corporate sponsors. You know, and they, you know he's out there with his pot belly just on the weekend. But he's like, it's you know. <laughs> so you have dabblers that get into something. They get really excited. Oh, you can't believe what I discovered! And oh, I'm taking lessons. I did, and then couple weeks into it, maybe a couple months, they just, it's not happening. So they, you say, hey, how's that, uh, how's that tennis going? How are those lessons? They say, yeah, no, I gave it up. But I, you gonna, I can't wait to tell you about the latest thing. I'm, you know, and then he's into another thing, right? So that's the kind of, you know, the dabbler. And then there's the hackers. And these are people that learn to do something to a certain degree of skill, right? So they get reasonably good at something, um, different levels of it, amateur people that just, you know, they have the same game, they go out and they play, they enjoy it and they've learned a certain level, like a golfer who golfs about 90 every time. It's just, you know, they're hackers. Then he says there's the masters. And he said the master is not somebody who's mastered something. He's somebody that's committed to continual improvement. You see, now many of us are dabblers in spirituality. Many of us are hackers in our prayer. We're hackers. We've gotten to a certain level. You know, we know how to pray. We Allahu Akbar. We go through. But the master is somebody who wants more presence every time they pray. They're committed to constant improvement in their practice. When they read, they want to become better readers. They want to have more understanding. And this is... You know, this is the path of mastery. So he talks about the learning plateau. So what happens when you first begin to do something that you haven't done before? Initially, you're going to see improvement. Like when I learned to type, you know, you get to a certain level and you get really, uh, you, you know, you increase pretty quick. But then you hit what's called a learning plateau. And then things just stop. And it becomes, actually, it's difficult because you're just not improving. And so you feel like, a lot of people will give up. The dabbler will give up at that point. The hacker will wade it through, and then they'll move to the next plateau. Now, what they discovered about learning plateaus is these are actually the periods when you're learning. This is the mo Even though it's the most difficult time, 
you're learning during this time. And that's where the jump comes from. Do you see? So, it, and exercise is like that. You know, you'll start exercising. Initially, you'll start seeing changes in your body, but then it stops. And then it's like a couple months and nothing ha- and then something changes, right? It's the same thing. Everything's like that. These are the sunan in creation. And so every the rule that every bit of practice makes a little more perfect appears to break down in these learning plateaus. The learner gets off the plateau and starts to climb again. The curve which records his achievements again shows steady progress from day to day. Plateaus are not found in all learning curves, but only in those which record progress in gaining a complex skill.